Many people like to debate why the German invasion of Russia failed. People point to a number of contributing factors, from the Russian winter to overwhelming Soviet manpower. And while many things contributed to the failure of the invasion, a few things stand out to me as the primary reasons for the catastrophe in the East. While most people see the Battle of Stalingrad as the turning point of the war in the East, the real failure for the Germans was during Operation Barbarossa in 1941. The gamble here was to defeat the Soviets quickly before the United States got involved, to both demoralize the British and to wipe out the only power on the European mainland that could rival the Germans, leaving the Germans free to focus all of their efforts against the Anglo-Saxons. This failed on both accounts. The Soviets were not defeated quickly, bringing them into the war on the side of the British, with America following only months later. The failure of the operation allied the two European powers against the Germans, effectively splitting their forces in two directions, while the Soviets had time to bring the reserves from the east forward to grind down the bulk of the German war machine. Certainly, the strategic initiative was lost after the Battle of Stalingrad, but even if they succeeded in their attempt to take the Caucasus in 1942, America was already in the war supplying the Soviets with whatever added material they needed to win. And between the Anglo-Saxon powers, they had enough oil to spare. Operation Barbarossa was critical to the German war effort because knocking the Soviets out before America could enter was the only way that could have comfortably confronted the enemies to the west. As such, we'll be looking at the issues faced by the Nazis during the opening year of the invasion. On paper, the operation looks sound. Over three million men, split into three army groups, were to cross the German-Russian border, surround large pockets of enemy troops, and capture the Ukraine, Moscow, and Leningrad. The operation, however, suffered from some serious design flaws right from the start, as well as having interference from Hitler make things much worse. The primary issue with the planning was that the German military leaders grossly underestimated Soviet numbers as well as their fighting capacity. This complete underestimation of the enemy did much to doom their war effort, as they made no long-term operational goals because they figured the Soviets would fall apart as soon as they crossed the border. Now, to be fair, the Germans had no reason to suspect that the Soviets were anything but incompetent. Stalin had only weeks before had many of his experience officers killed in his purges, and the Soviets had in 1940 botched their invasion of Finland, a country with less than a tenth of their population. It should be noted that the Soviets did beat Finland in this war and force them to cede territory, but not nearly to the extent that they should have been capable of. Meanwhile, the Germans had, in only a few months and with minimal casualties, blitzed across and conquered all of Western Europe. The number of Soviet soldiers, on the other hand, were effectively ignored. Nazi intelligence should have been able to gain a clearer picture of the real strength of Soviet numbers, but the estimations were far lower than the reality. But even if the true numbers were higher, so the military presumed, the disorganized Russians would crumble before the might of the superior German army. Now, to their credit, the Germans were better organized and better prepared for the war, and cut deep into Soviet territory with great success in the opening months of the campaign. They destroyed nearly all Soviet aircraft and captured around 20,000 Russian soldiers, killing tens of thousands more. But their successes also blinded them. The armies basically ran forward to gobble up as much territory as possible, while Hitler eventually intervened to prevent the Wehrmacht from achieving any meaningful victories. This would prove catastrophic going forward. First, Hitler decided that he would prefer that Army Group North, in concert with their Finnish allies, encircle Leningrad and force it to capitulate instead of just taking the city. Crucially, this delay meant that the Soviets had time to reinforce the city, preventing the Germans from taking it at a later point and preventing the armies used to encircle it from participating in other fronts. The city could have been in Nazi hands right from the onset of the war, but Hitler, believing he would destroy the Russians quickly, assumed they wouldn't be able to resupply the city in the future and wanted to humiliate them. But Hitler wasn't thinking in the long term. He wrongly assumed that the war would be ended swiftly by Blitzkrieg tactics. The second major mistake of the campaign was diverting half of Army Group Center to the south to capture the Ukraine. Again, this was also due to Hitler's intervention. Rather than look at the campaign from an operational perspective, Hitler put an ideological spin on things, demanding that the territory of the Ukraine be under German control so we could use its vast wheat fields to feed the German people in an operation literally called the Hunger Plan because it would result in the starvation of the native Ukrainians. The effects of this decision cannot be overstated. By diverting half of the army group to the Ukraine, Hitler effectively gave up any real chance they had at capturing Moscow and winning the war. To be fair, there's no guarantee that they would have been able to do this anyways, given stiff Russian resistance, bad weather, and overextended supply lines. But the fact remains that the odds were much higher before those divisions were sent south, and the drive towards Moscow delayed by several weeks. Aside from that, Stalin had decided to stay in Moscow despite the approaching German army so that morale didn't completely collapse. In 1941, Stalin had such complete control over the country that, at least in my mind, his demise would have led to serious divisions in the higher levels of the Soviet state and a serious fall in the morale of the general populace, making it much easier for the Wehrmacht to conquer the areas they desired. 
These delays and diversions, caused primarily because of Hitler and the military's underestimation of and lack of respect for the Soviets, ultimately resulted in a failure to deliver the decisive blows necessary for victory in the East. While much of this can be attributed to Hitler personally, it should not be ignored that most of the military leadership shared his views on the inferiority of the Russians as a fighting force, and so the operational planning on all levels wasn't taken as seriously as the operations in the West. Combined with lackluster military planning, Germany was also burdened with national socialism. Racism undoubtedly played a major role in the German army's defeat in the East for several reasons. First off, millions of men who could have been in the military fighting on the front lines were serving in the Waffen-SS behind the front, purging anyone the Nazis deemed a potential threat. Second, millions of people from the Baltic states, Belarus, and the Ukraine welcomed the Germans as liberators from the Bolsheviks and would have happily fought alongside the Wehrmacht. But Hitler found this unacceptable and against Nazi ideology. Hitler refused to allow his army, battered from months of hard fighting in Russia, to be supplemented by the peoples he conquered. Despite pulling volunteers from basically every other country in Europe, including Spain, France, and Sweden. He refused this out of hand because he viewed the Slavs of the East as subhuman and unworthy of fighting alongside his Ubermensch. All of these men were to instead suffer at the hands of the SS and be driven back into the arms of Stalin, working as saboteurs and rebels against the occupiers. On top of that, the SS were given a free hand to murder the native peoples for basically any reason, while hundreds of thousands of people were taken to work as slave laborers in Germany and Poland, causing massive unrest within the country. Trains, which could have been moving troops and materials to the front or wounded soldiers to safety, were instead used to transport slave laborers and Holocaust victims to work to death. Instead of co-opting the native peoples, Hitler resolved to starve and execute them. Instead of offering them freedom under German supervision, he promised them extinction. The great irony of this is that in 1944 and 1945, when manpower was short and the Nazis were clearly losing, Hitler pretty indiscriminately drew peoples from all over to occupied Europe to help him fight a losing battle, regardless of their ethnic background. A favorite alternate history for many people is what if the Nazis won World War II, and people will spend hours debating what they could have done to win the war. But the fact of the matter is, Germany lost the war in both the East and West because they were Nazis. Germany could have won the war if led by competent military and political leaders who took the world around them seriously. Instead, the German people were led to war by a group of criminals who spent more time lying to their populace, murdering innocent people, and stealing the belongings of their so-called enemies. Hitler's racist ideology and his insistence that the war be conducted through an ideological lens bogged down operations hindered the ability of the professional military staff to make rational decisions based on the situation they were in and turned millions of potential allies to the Reich into rebels who would stop at nothing to undermine the military operations of their genocidal oppressors.